Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be answering the question, what is modular congruence? I'm always excited to get into new topics I haven't covered on the channel yet, so I hope you're as excited as I am. So modular congruence, it's usually written like this, and this is read A is congruent to B mod C. And here, C is called the modulus. Before we start talking about what modular congruence is in terms of these variables A, B, and C, I think it will be more helpful if we start with some examples. So here's an example of a modular congruence. 8 is congruent to 14 mod 3. So why is this true? It's true because when you divide 8 by 3, you get the same remainder as when you divide 14 by 3. 8 divided by 3 gives a remainder of 2. 14 divided by 3 also gives a remainder of 2. We can see this is true because 8 is equal to 2 times 3 plus 2, so there you've got your remainder of 2, and 14 is equal to 4 times 3 plus 2. So again, we've got a remainder of 2. So since 8 and 14 both have the same remainder when divided by 3, we say that 8 is congruent to 14 mod 3. So hopefully that gives you a decent idea of what modular congruence is, but let's look at another example. Another congruence is that 4 is congruent to 16 mod 6. We see this is true because 4 divided by 6 gives a remainder of 4. 4 is equal to 0 times 6 plus 4. And of course, 16 divided by 6 also gives a remainder of 4. 16 is equal to 2 times 6 plus 4. So just as before, since 4 and 16 both have the same remainder when divided by 6, we say that these numbers are congruent mod 6. Also, something important to note is that modular congruence is an equivalence relation. This means that modular congruence is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So in many ways, it works a lot like the equivalence relation equal to that we're all very familiar with. But with all that said, let me shrink all this junk a little bit, move it out of the way, and then we can talk a bit more abstractly about modular congruence. And before we go on, I should add that when we're talking about modular congruence, A and B are usually going to be integers, so A and B are elements of the integers, and C, the modulus, is a natural number greater than 1. So C is an element of the natural numbers, and C is greater than 1. So most often, these are the types of numbers we're talking about with modular congruence. We already said that A is congruent to B, mod C, if and only if A and B have the same remainders when divided by C. But there's also another equivalent definition of modular congruence that is often used and often useful. This other definition says that A is congruent to B, mod C, if and only if C divides A minus B. This notation, c divides a minus b, just means that a minus b is an integer multiple of c. The two definitions we have stated are equivalent definitions, but I think this one is a bit less ambiguous because the other definition uses the word remainder, and people don't always mean the exact same thing by the word remainder. So let's see this definition in action. We already said that 8 is congruent to 14 mod 3. Then 3, which is our c value, should divide 8 minus 14, which are our a and b values respectively. So is that true? Well, 8 minus 14 is equal to negative 6. And indeed, 3 does divide negative 6, because negative 6 is an integer multiple of 3. We can see that because negative 6 is equal to 3 times negative 2. Now let's see an example of using this definition to establish modular congruence. Consider 23 minus 9. 23 minus 9 is equal to 14, and we know that 7 divides 14 because 14 is equal to 7 times 2. So since 7, our c value in this case, divides 23 minus 9, our a and b values respectively, that means that 23 is congruent to 9 mod 7. Additionally, since 2 divides 14, we could also say that 23 is congruent to 9 mod 2. Also, 14 divides 14, so we could say that 23 is congruent to 9 mod 14. Again, this is because 14 
2 and 7 all divide 23 minus 9. To refer back to the first definition we stated, 23 divided by 14 has a remainder of 9, and 9 divided by 14 also has a remainder of 9. And the same sort of thing is true with these other examples. So those are just a few more examples of modular congruence using this other definition. Let me shrink all this stuff down a little bit, and I'll, I'll hide this up here, sneak it up here in the corner. I think we should briefly touch on modular congruence with negative numbers before we go. So here is an example of that. Negative 14 is congruent to 2 mod 4, because negative 14 minus 2 is equal to negative 16, and 4 does divide negative 16, because negative 16 is equal to 4 multiplied by negative 4. But what if we were using the other definition that involves remainders? How would we be able to conclude that 14 is congruent to 2 mod 4 using that definition? Well, what is the remainder of negative 14 when divided by 4? The remainder, in this case, is positive 2. Because negative 14 is equal to 4 multiplied by negative 4 plus 2. And you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, negative 14 is also equal to 4 times negative 3 minus 2. So why isn't negative 2 the remainder? Well, in this context, if we have a number a divided by c, and we want to know the remainder r, we want r, the remainder, to be greater than or equal to 0 and less than c. So we consider the remainder to be a positive number. And that's why positive 2 is the remainder in this case, and not negative 2. And then, of course, if we take 2 divided by 4, just to finish this example, we have a remainder of 2. Because 2 is equal to 4 multiplied by 0 plus 2. So that's just a little bit about modular congruence. As a quick recap, we say that a is congruent to b mod c if and only if a and b both have the same remainder when divided by c. Equivalently, a is congruent to b mod c if and only if c divides a minus b. There is a lot more we could get into regarding modular congruence, like modular arithmetic and all sorts of useful properties regarding modular congruence. But for now, we'll call it a day, so I hope this video helped you understand what modular congruence is. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or if you have any other video requests. If you'd like to see more videos on topics related to modular congruence, let me know and I'd be happy to talk more about it. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. Awake,